we space and time are things that we take for granted, but we've been told and we're starting to believe that what Einstein said, that space and time are not quite as they seem, but they're dynamic, they're mobile, they can curve, they can slow, they can, they can expand, and, uh, uh, but the two are really unified together, and we need to, un to understand space-time is critical to understand the nature of our universe. It's the most important question. Okay, so what it's is most, time? What is space? Okay, even more important than what are the particles and what are the forces, and we want to understand I everything. I think so. I so think it's so. It, it, it. Some people have thought of it as it's the arena in which all the act of particles and physics play out, but it may be more than that. The basic division in the subject goes back a long time. It goes back to debates between Newton and his contemporaries, Leibniz and other contemporaries. And the big question is, is space an arena in which things happen, in which things come on and off? Or is there no arena? Is space just a network of relationships? A way to ask the question is if the whole universe were moved entirely 10 meters to the left, would it matter? Does it even mean something to say that? Because no relationships would right, change. Right. And Newton said, yes, it is different. And Leibniz said, no, it's even wrong to ask the question because there's no discernible difference between the universe here and the universe 10 meters to the left. And this very question of whether space is a framework, an absolute background, or whether space is an aspect of reality that grows out of a network of relationships, of causality, of change, is the fundamental question as has been for 400 years. Okay, so if we're trying to understand the nature of space at this point, we're dealing with different concepts as well. We're dealing with relationships. Yes. We're dealing with causation. Yes. And so those are very fundamental ideas, but what you're saying is that to understand space, we may have to understand those other two, which may be more fundamental than space itself. Yes, and indeed, one can take general relativity, and if you ask, what in that sophisticated mathematics is it really asserting about the nature of space and time? Right. What's asserting, what's it, what it is asserting about space and time is that the most fundamental relationships are relationships of causality. This is the modern way of understanding Einstein's theory of general relativity. And so if you think about the structure, an event happens and light goes out of it, we have these pictures of light cones going out. And if you're can travel from as that... Matter, as light goes out over time at the speed of light, it covers in greater and greater distance. Greater, greater and greater distance. So you imagine a sphere going out. Right. Now, if a later event happens within that sphere, information could have reached there from the first event going at slower than the speed of light. And so there could be a causal relation. There will be a causal relation between the first event and right. the second. Right. If another event is so far away that light could not have gotten there, then there's no causal relation. And the interesting thing is, if you write down a list of all the causal relations between all the events in the universe, you describe the geometry of space-time almost completely. Oh. There's still a little bit of information that you have to put in, which is <laughs> counting, which is how many events take place. So and where, then you have everything. So whereas the common perception is that we have space, and in the space there are relationships like my chair and your chair, or there are causes that I push your chair and you, you move a little bit, that, that that is an artificial distinction, that maybe it's the events themselves that create the concept of space? Yes. Yes. I mean, that's... And, and that's not just a metaphor. It's the best way of understanding both the principles and the mathematics of Einstein's theory of general mm. relativity. Mm. Now, this sounds very profound. Are there, are there uh, implications of this that you can say, okay, if that's, if that's true then, what follows? What, what would then happen that we can see in observation or learn about our world? Or is this just some philosophical idea? For example, the whole idea of what a black hole is comes from thinking about the causal relations. A horizon is a boundary to what can be causally influenced by what's, quote, inside the black hole. Yes. So if you want to really conceive of what a black hole is, you have to think of it in terms of causality and causal relations. The idea of the singularity at the beginning of the universe, that space and time cannot be continued beyond a certain set of events, 
came from thinking about the causality. This was a kind of revolution in our understanding of general relativity, brought about principally by Roger Penrose in the 1960s. Okay, so now we have sort of this new concept of space as a, perhaps an emergent property of, of, of relationships and, and causes between events. Now let's bring time into it because Einstein... Oh, but time is already in it because causality is okay. time. Because causality is, is a, a sequence? It's causality is a sequence. So, so what you're saying is that time then is, uh, is also emergent because once you have the cause, time is a natural product of that as opposed to time being something that we flow through. Yes, if you take that point of view, then causality is the fundamental aspect of time and the, our experience of the flow of time is a product of that. A, a, der a derivative? A derivative of that. Okay, okay. Now, c can you keep then space and time, is, is, is that one unit, Einstein's so-called block universe, where every event had a three-dimensional location and a location in time, so a four-dimensional piece, so you can see the whole history of the universe from beginning to end, supposedly, in this four-dimensional block universe where time is a coordinate? You know, from the point of general relativity, classical general relativity, you can have it both ways. You can think of this block universe picture, which you mentioned, and you can get away with that to a certain extent. When you bring in other questions about how quantum mechanics fits into the whole picture, about how thermodynamics fits into the whole picture and entropy, I think it gets harder to maintain this block universe picture. And for me, this is one of the profound issues. The issue is, is time really fundamental so that it's the one thing that's not emergent, or is time somehow emergent or a consequence of other things? And of course, we don't know the answer, but different approaches to the fundamental questions about cosmology, about quantum gravity, line up on different sides of those questions. And this is something I've been thinking about myself a great deal, and I've been finding, personally, I'm thinking more and more in the direction that time is fundamental, is not emergent. It differentiated from space? Yes. So you are teasing apart space and time? Because in quantum gravity... Sounds quite radical. Uh, sure it is, but it's also may be the most conservative solution to a set of conundrums that we face when we try to bring together quantum theory and gravity, because the other alternative is that time goes away completely. And in the view that time goes away completely and time is, quote, emergent, then one imagines a world, and, and Julian Barber is the person who's best explicated this idea, the world is nothing but a vast collection of moments with not necessarily any relation amongst them. The, the relations of time of causality dissolve and is just disconnected moments. And this does represent an, a proper interpretation of certain mathematical approaches to quantum gravity. Okay. But these approaches, they succeed to a certain extent and then they fail. They fail for technical reasons, so I don't think I have to go into that here. But when a problem confronts, here's an interesting thing about being a theoretical physicist. A lot is a matter of judgment. And when you face a problem where you make technical progress on some aspects and nobody makes technical progress on some other things, there comes a moment when you say, is that over here really a technical problem? Or do we just have a conceptual misunderstanding? Are we conceiving of it the wrong way? And that's why we can't make any technical progress. And that's what you think about time. That's what I think about time. 